So in this video, we're gonna dive into my advice, my thoughts on whether or not you should be copywriting your music. to say right here at the front end of this video that I'm not a music lawyer. I don't have this huge amount of knowledge on music law, so I'm definitely not the final authority on this subject, but I'll also say I have been running a studio for four years, so I'm sharing this advice from my personal experience. So let's get into it. So usually the question comes to me like this. Hey Dean, I'm a new artist. I'm getting ready to release my first single or album. Should I be worried about copywriting my stuff? And first, I just wanna give you four things to think about before I share with you my advice on whether or not you should copyright your music. Thought number one is, for your music to be in danger of being stolen, it has to be really, really good. And this might sound a little bit harsh, but for most new artists out there, they really shouldn't be worried about their music getting stolen because they're still working on their craft. And for someone to actually wanna take that bold step and steal a song and call it their own, that song would have to be a really, really great idea. The second thought, and this one's probably much more important, is that if you don't have a somewhat large following already before you make that next song release, then the chances of your song being stolen are just infinitesimal. Think about it this way. If you're struggling to get 100 of your closest friends and family and followers to go find and listen to your music, then you're gonna have an even harder time attracting a music thief to find and listen to your tracks. Because there are literally millions and millions of songs being put out there all the time. And people outside of your sphere don't tend to find songs until you start to build out a following. Thought number three is to consider the cost of copywriting your songs. Usually it's about $35 per song, or you can do this group thing, this batch deal where you can copyright the whole batch of songs, say five or 10 songs for $55. So let's just take that number of $35 and say that you wanna release 10 songs over the next couple years, and you're gonna release them one by one as singles then it would cost you $350 to copyright all of those songs. And my little bit of perspective on that is, let's say you're recording all of those songs using your cell phone's built-in microphone using GarageBand or something like that, which is amazing, that's awesome, I'm all for that. But I would say, instead of spending $350 on copywriting your songs, use that money and go get yourself a nice interface, a nice studio microphone, and kind of get yourself up in caliber as far as production goes and get yourself into the realm where you just might get your song stolen. <laughs> and then the fourth thought is actually on the other side of the fence. And that's, I have a lot of artists or students come through the studio who go, man, I just need that sense of security. I wanna know that my songs are safe. And more than the security, some artists just really like the feeling of fulfillment, knowing that their songs have been recorded, they've been released and published, and now they've been copyrighted. It feels like they've completed the job and their songs are now legit. All right, so now let's bring it all back around to my advice. What's my advice for you as a new artist? And this is the very advice that I've had students come into this studio and sit with me face to face and ask me this question. This is what I say to them. Would I advise you to copyright your songs if it's your first release or you're relatively unknown? My answer would be no, I wouldn't necessarily advise it. I would recommend you spend that money and that time on increasing your craft, on increasing your production level. But what I would do is create a timestamp for yourself. And what is a timestamp? Well, it's just proof of when that song was created or when it was released. And you can do this simply by looking at the timestamp on your digital audio workstation, or you could even take it a step further. You could email yourself an exported copy, an MP3 or WAV file of the song, or you could even upload it to something like YouTube. Even if you just make it private and you don't even publish it, all of those create timestamps so that just in case it's needed in a court of law, you can show them, look, I created this song, I released this song at these dates, then Joe Bob came here two years later and he's releasing this song, calling it his own, and you can use that timestamp to your advantage. And then a follow-up question that a lot of people will ask is, well, when should I start to consider copywriting my music? How big do I need to be? And my response to that is, when you're starting to get between thousands or even tens of thousands of listens on your songs each month, then I would definitely start to consider copywriting my songs. But if you're struggling to even get 100 streams 
streams or even a thousand streams. I, I honestly, I wouldn't worry about it. But then on the other side of the fence for my artists and students who just really want that sense of security, they have a little bit of extra money, then I say, just go for it, just do it. It doesn't take that long to do. It doesn't cost that much money. So if you want that security or that sense of fulfillment and completion, then by all means, go for it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. It's not a bad plan at all. So that's my advice when it comes to copywriting your music. And another piece of advice that I commonly give to my artists is that if they want to upload their music to all the platforms like TikTok, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, etc., I have always used and recommended DistroKid. DistroKid is a distribution service that for as little as $20 a year, you can actually upload unlimited songs to all of the major platforms for that $19.99 a year. And yes, DistroKid is sponsoring this video, but they weren't sponsoring me whenever I started this studio four years ago or when I started the YouTube channel. And that's when I discovered and started using DistroKid. I started advising all of my artists use DistroKid and then they reach out to me after the fact. So if you're interested in getting your music onto all the major platforms, you can actually use this studio's link, my studio's link and save 7% on your annual fee. So that's it for this video. This has been your big bro in the studio, Dean. And I've been trying to answer some of the questions that new artists commonly ask. I hope this has been helpful and I will catch you in another video.